Hello, and here we are again. It's Thursday, and we're at episode five of our midweek series, The Importance Of. This is where we're looking together at several areas that, that we feel will be really important for us to reflect and consider as we come back together as a church family without those restrictions. Over the last four weeks, we've looked at a number of different things. Some of them are for us to reflect and consider as individuals. Some of them are more collective as a church family. But as we work towards the ending of these restrictions, we're seeing that as the closing of a chapter and the opening of a new one, an important new season that we're moving into. So that's why it'll be important to draw the line under things of the past, taking what we've learned, taking what has been good and what has been helpful, but moving forward into something new. Today, I want to talk to you about the importance of reflection and confession. You know, being in a community of believers offers so much. Fellowship, security, comfort, structure. In Genesis, God looked at Adam and said, it is not good that, it, that Adam is alone. Let us make him a helpmeet. Right from the beginning, God saw that it was important we were in some form of community, that we were not on our own, that we were with others. Look at this scripture in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verses 9 and 10. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their toil. For if they fall, one will lift the other up. But woe to the one who is alone and falls and does not have another to help. God puts us in a church family, in community, to help and support one another in our daily walk. And in many ways, the lockdown took that away. Let's face it, last year was hard on us all in different ways. But I don't think I spoke to a single person that didn't say the, the lockdown had impact, impacted them in some way. Our usual ways of engaging with one another had gone. And in those environments, it can be very easy to allow things to creep in. Things that are not good. Things that are not godly. And what is going to be important as we move forward into this new chapter is that we stop and reflect and we identify anything, anything that we may have let take a hold, a foothold in our lives or something that has re-emerged that we thought we've dealt with. Perhaps during the pandemic, attitudes have crept in that are simply not good and right. There were certainly high emotions running through the whole of God's church towards the restrictions. We saw it in social media posts. We spoke to different people. We saw it across the board. And it could have been very easy to start to judge others who responded differently to the way you or I did towards the restrictions. You know, there is no room for a judgmental spirit in God's community. Or perhaps your, your anger over how things have been dealt with during the pandemic tipped over into something that was not right and not of God. God tells us to be angry, but sin not, which personally I found easier said than done. Or perhaps you've let a critical spirit just creep in, being cut off from things and people. It's easier to sit back and criticise what's been going on. Those things can so easily just, just eat us away and not be good and right. And these are things to reflect on and bring before God before we move into this next season. Or perhaps past struggles or sins that you thought you'd dealt with have resurfaced and taken hold again. We saw on the news that the purchase of alcohol increased significantly during lockdown. While that in itself is not wrong, a dependency upon it or a choice to overindulge and get drunk is just not God's best for you. Or perhaps you spent a lot of time at home, just you and the internet, Practices that you dealt with years ago may have taken hold again. Or without structures to support you, 
or others to be around you, you've simply let your relationship with God become inconsequential. It's a side note. You know he's there, but just some of those good disciplines and good habits have just drifted away. Or maybe it's something else. What is important is that we all stop, we reflect, and we ask God, Lord, is there anything I've picked up? Is there anything that I've, I've let take a foothold in my life that I need to deal with? Because I don't want to take it into this new chapter. Sometimes these things dress themselves up in all sorts of respectable clothes, clothes, and they only become obvious when we honestly ask the Holy Spirit to reveal them to us. And that's my encouragement today in this thought. Let's just take, take a moment to stop and ask God, have we allowed things to creep back in? Maybe for some of you it will be very obvious that you've allowed habits and sins to re, re, reseat themselves in your life. Now there's nothing to be ashamed of if something is identified by the Holy Spirit. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We've all sinned, we've all fallen short. But once again, the Bible tells us there are times when it's good to do these things and to share them with others. That's the confession part. Let's have a look at these scriptures. Proverbs 28 verse 13 says this, He who covers his sins will not prosper. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. James chapter 5 verse 16, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. The prayer of, a, of the righteous is powerful and effective. When we identify something, the only course of action is to repent to come before God and to choose to walk a different way. However, there are also times when it's good to share it with others. It brings mercy, the scripture tells us. It brings healing and it brings power when we confess our sins towards others. Not only that, but we can receive ministry from somebody else, accountability and a deeper relationship with God and with others when we bring things that may have crept in in the darkness into the light. So over the next few days, let's stop, let's reflect, let's ask God to deal with whatever he highlights in our lives. Why? Because we're coming into a new season together as one body in Christ.